movements won in that revolutionary conflict. We are committed to patriotism, to historic preservation, and to education. More than that, we daughters of the American Revolution are what I like to say, I would like to call the institutional memory of that history. DEAR is a service organization. Nearly a million women have proven that they are part of this revolutionary lineage with nearly 200,000 active today. We honor the service of men like Charles Denny and women who were inspired to give of themselves. And we honor our veterans and active duty military today. Deeply grateful for what we have. We give to others in broad satisfaction from being a part of our communities as we do so. We are naturally a part of the preservation of history and have been in this very place two years ago to do so. We have also honored our friend, Matt Davis, for his own commitment to historic preservations. Indeed, daughters were here 80 years ago to participate in the dedication of this very cemetery. The patriotic cadence we hear today, not just by our drummer, Will Jennings, but by our brothers in SAR, is a homecoming to our hearts, a thrill to share with our friends in Volcano. DAR is also committed to education for all ages and in many subjects. At this time of the year, we are raising the awareness of our beloved United States Constitution. By federal law, September 17th to the 23rd each year is proclaimed to be Constitution Week. This is a concept originally urged by the DAR. For Constitution Week, we daughters work to reawaken appreciation for our magnificent founding documents among our fellow citizens and especially students. Our own chapters Constitution Week Chairman Erin Mongelli, who I know is here today, but she may be back a little bit further with her children near our tent. Erin um, Mongelli has won local and national awards for her visits to many classrooms and her creative teaching of a Constitution story. She prepares display kits for multiple schools and makes sure that there is plenty of education to be served up along with her enthusiasm. All DAR chapters are presently asking their tongues to proclaim Constitution Week, and Mayor Fleischer will have his letter probably Monday when he goes to the office, asking them to proclaim Constitution Week for all of their residents and all of our communities. There is something else we love to share about the Constitution celebration in DAR, and that is bells across the mirror. For this annual event, we ask you to mark your calendars for September 17th at 3 p.m. Central Time. And at exactly that time, if you ring a bell alone with a group or you get someone who has a carol on to ring the carol on. We will be a part of a unique nationwide experience. Simultaneously, thousands will be ringing bells to celebrate the very day, September 17, 1787, when the Constitution was signed. Without the amazingly durable plan for government written into our organizing law, the freedoms we now enjoy might not exist. Without, without this government document, the consistent, predictable fairness planned for government might not exist. And without the effectiveness of the Constitution, those who fought for the values achieved in it, like Mr. Charles Denny, might have fought in vain. 
And now, as our community veterans well know, the Constitution enshrines just what we find worth fighting for today. The DAR chapter is delighted to offer the hospitality this afternoon after the event, and our tents will also have information about DAR in general and our chapter and the possibility of becoming a member. Thank you so much for being here. Now I'd like to introduce you to James Hogan, Post Commander of the William Martin VFW Post 725. Order, arm. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you all for coming. I'd like to thank the uh, DAR and the SAR uh, for uh, the drive behind um, the Charles Denny plaque. Uh, anytime this nation honors a veteran is a good day. And this community, especially the village, has been patriotic from day one. I moved in here in 1992, and they have taken care of veterans and the William Martin Post all this time. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure to be part of this. Uh, and I'd like to say that Charles Denny did not die in vain or fight in vain because we all don't have a British accent and we're not part of this B exit thing going on. So, God bless America. Thank you, James, and thank you for your service. Um, we have the distinct privilege now of welcoming Charles Denny's fourth great-granddaughter, Wilma McGowan, and his fifth great-granddaughter, Stacy McGowan Olson. Please welcome Stacy McGowan Olson as the family spokesperson.
Um, I've had the pleasure of working uh, with our next guest for the last year or so uh, in preparation for this event. He's instrumental in documenting the history of the Denny family. Would you please welcome local Makina historian, Matt Gable. No name has been more prominently associated with the development of Mokina than that of Denny. It was in 1834, not long after the end of the Black Hawk War, that the family of New Yorker Alan Denny first settled and carved out their home on the wild, untamed prairie where our village would later stand, joining the tiniest handful of other residents of European descent who lived here at the time. Uh, his father, the patriot Charles Denny, was himself a brave pioneer who joined his sons and daughter here in 1838. Uh, his time among his family, however, in the Hickory Creek settlement was short, for he passed away on August 6th, 1839, at the age of 79. And ultimately, he and his wife, Lucinda Denny, uh, who perished four days previous, would become the first souls interred at this family plot that his son Alan, who himself fought the British in 1812, had set aside on his farm. Incidentally, in 1852, 13 years after the passing of his patriot father, Alan Denny sealed his own place uh, in our history by becoming the father of Mokina when he completed the first plat uh, of the town with the arrival of the Rock Island Railroad. It was over a hundred years ago that our attention was first drawn to these hallowed grounds. The Louis Joliet chapter of the DAR discovered Patriot Denny's grave here in a tangle of overgrowth as early as 1914 after which they presented a silk Betsy Ross clad to the Mokina Public School in his honor. With the help of an ambitious local reporter named William Semler, the DAR marked Charles Denny's mortal remains here with a government-issued marker in 1916. 22 years later, in 1939, the General Henry Dearborn chapter of Chicago came to Mokina to dedicate the granite boulder, which still prominently stands to this day. What united, pardon me, what united our community for each of these events was the sense of honor and pride over Patriot Denny's presence in our midst. I can safely say that today, Mokina feels this same sense of proudness, not only for his sacrifices during the tumultuous years of the revolution, but for his having been one of us. Thank you. Please welcome now the Honorable Illinois State Representative of the 37th District, Ms. Margo McDermott. gathered here at this local historic landmark to rededicate and remember what is believed to be the first known Christian burial site in Mokina. By honoring the final resting place of this soldier who chose to live out his days in Mokina, Illinois, we remember that this unassuming cemetery that so many pass by every day is rich in both local and national history. Charles Denny fought the Revolutionary War son, Alan Denny, who set aside this plot, fought in the War of 1812. Although Charles Denny was not a native to a kingdom known as the state of Illinois, he chose to make it his final resting place. Like many post-revolutionary war soldiers, Denny and his family moved west, 
and began to found what would become the town we now know, love, and many here today call home. They set out to explore, discover, and settle a land that was largely unknown further east, but wide open. The land the Denny family tilled and the decisions they took part in quite literally shaped the Mokina and Frankfurt that we know today. Generations of families like this created the cultural identity of what it means to be an American, an Illinoisan, and a resident of Mokina. A village is an amalgamation of pioneering families and their ancestors, a developing community forged by how they chose to raise their kids, the values they instilled in one another, the revolutionary spirit kept alive even today, right up to our own Aaron Toppin, building on each other over time. The snowball effect of the Denny family and other families like theirs eventually formed Mokina into the community that